Hi everyone. Okay, in this video, we're just gonna play around a little bit with where we are on the unit circle. Um, so I'm gonna give you various starting points and then I'm gonna give you different arc lengths and directions. And our goal is to figure out which quadrant we're in and then you sine and cosine to find exact coordinates of our point that we end up at and estimate the value of those coordinates. So we'll get a little technology piece in there as well because we do sometimes want to be able to find approximate values. Okay, so first one, we're going to start at one zero. So that's the normal place to start which will make this one not too tricky. And then we're supposed to imagine, okay, an ant is starting at this point and it's crawling three units counterclockwise. So think carefully about your direction. I don't know if it's just me, but I easily get myself backwards if I don't think about it. Counterclockwise is the usual direction for us. So clockwise would be a negative angle for us. Counterclockwise is a positive angle. So basically we're doing standard position. So this one's not too weird and we're supposed to go three units it is not a multiple of pi so we do want to think carefully about that just remember that halfway around the circle is pi which is approximately 3.14 so we're going almost halfway around the circle and that's your visual and this is approximate and this is great so based on this i can say that i end up in quadrant two and then um to get my coordinates, I just need to say, what was your angle or arc length in standard position? And since we were already in standard position, there's nothing weird about that. It was just three. We crawled three units, standard position, standard direction. So to get our X coordinate, we're gonna take cosine of that arc length of three. And to get our Y coordinate, we're gonna take sine of our arc length of three. So those are exact coordinates. That's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with it. If you're not going to try and figure out exactly what that looks like, we should be totally happy here. It is really helpful to be able to get approximate values. So cosine three, sine three. Uh, one way you can do this is you can go back up to the Desmos link from example two, and at least some of these you could do nicely with the graph. Some of them you won't be able to do with the graph. Let me just switch over. Okay, there we go. So we're trying to do um, coordinates when our arc length is three. So I would drag the little uh, marker over here the slider for a on the left let's see where am i trying to go to three um you can drag the point around but it jumps around a little between um different coterminal angles it behaves a little weirdly so you can drag that you can also just click on that three um where that three is and type in an arc length so if it's the slider is annoying you you can do it that way and there's some approximate coordinates negative 0.99 and 0.14 roughly And then do a little bit of a reasonable che reasonableness check on that. Um, we're really close to the x-axis um, near negative one zero. So having an x-coordinate really close to negative one and a really small y-coordinate seems great. Okay, number two, the ant starts at one zero, sort of oblong. So still starting in the normal spot, but we are going clockwise this time. So we're gonna go four units, but we're going clockwise. So we gotta go the opposite direction. Four is a little more than halfway around the circle. Um, remember if it helps, this is about 1.57. So roughly one and a half, and this is roughly three. So this would be roughly 4.5 it's a little bit more than that 4.71 is what it actually is but just to kind of get the idea okay so a little more than halfway around not a full three quarters of the way around for sure so we are in standard position but we're going the opposite direction so we can say that we are in quadrant two again but this time it's going to be cosine of negative four sine of negative four since we went the opposite direction and this is another great one for us to do um, with the graph so we can drag our cursor or type in there until we're at negative four there it is 
and I get about negative 0.654. Uh, so we'll say negative 0.65, positive 0.76. And again, with that reasonableness check, does this seem approximately like where we were on the circle? Yeah, maybe my point looks a little bit low, but it is kind of in the ballpark. So I think we're in good shape still. Okay, now things are going to get a little bit trickier. So we're going to start at 0, 1. So we are definitely not in standard position. 0, 1 is up at the top of the circle. And then we are going to go the positive direction. So we're going to go two units counterclockwise. Remember, a quarter of the way around the circle, this much, is about 1.57. So we've got to go a little bit further than that. Um, that's probably even too much. We're definitely not even close to halfway around because that's a full three units. So we're closer to the 1.57 than the 3.14. So again, this is rough and that's completely fine. So that was two units. Okay, so the first part I don't think is too bad. I'm in quadrant three. The part that gets a little bit tricky is that we can't just say cosine two, sine two, because cosine and sine always understand your arc length or your angle as starting from the positive x-axis. So they are always going to assume that you started at one zero. If you say, okay, I want cosine of two, the cosine function is going to say, okay, start at one zero and go two units, and it's going to assume you're up here. That's not what we want. We want to be another quarter of the way around the circle. So what we really want is cosine of pi over two plus two. Um, and you can visualize that a couple of ways. One is you could picture my green arc, and if you can see that you just have to go another quarter of the way around the circle, that's great. I actually think that could be a little tricky. The way I actually think about this is I, if I started at one zero, I'd have to go pi over two to get to the starting point that I was told in this problem, the starting point for the ant. So there's pi over two, and then I have to go an additional two. So pi over two plus two, that's how I look at it. But there's more than one way to do that. Um, just like there's more than one description for getting to the top of the circle. I just tried to look for the easiest. So I said I went pi over two units to get to the top of the circle. But you might look at that and say, I went negative three pi over two to get to the top of the circle. And then I have to add two to that. So more than one correct answer. And if you're not sure if your answer is coterminal, if it's correct, uh, use those approximate values to check and see if you really are getting the same point. Okay, so cosine, sine. And then the approximates for this one, uh, you can still use Desmos, but we'd have to figure out what is pi over two plus two, what is our arc length? Okay, so over here in Desmos, um, if this folder is open and you're seeing a bunch of junk, you can just uh, hit the close arrow. I think you might, oh, no, nope, that actually turns it off. So just hit the little arrow and it'll hide all that. Click down below that, get a new box open for us to do some calculations in. And you can either just type this in. So for pi, type in pi, except not capitalized, over two. And then you'll either want to click or use the arrows to get out of that fraction bar. And we want to add two. So our arc length was about 3.57. Um, if you don't want to type in pi every time, also note that you can show this little keyboard at the bottom. And it does have a pi button. Um, you can hit functions to pull up a bunch of your functions. You could just type in things like sine, cosine, tangent. Or you can pull them up here. So feel free to use that if you like that better. Okay, so I can use my slider and say, okay, if I think my arc length is roughly 3.6. Wait, oh, almost there, six. Okay, my coordinates are about negative point uh, nine zero is what that would round to, and then about negative 0.4. Uh, I wouldn't even say second decimal place there because we've already rounded our arc length quite a bit. It's actually 3.57 and not 3.6. So what I'd actually recommend here is that you use technology. It can be Desmos or a hand calculator. Again, do make sure you're in radian mode. So for Desmos, it's right here at the bottom of this settings menu, radians. Um, and then you can just type in in cosine of pi over two plus two. 
And that's just a little bit better estimate. And then the same thing for sine pi over 2 plus 2. So about negative 0.91, negative 0.42. So those are approximate coordinates. Um, and you will be tested with and without calculators. So for the with calculator part, um, if you have a calculator, it's really handy just to make sure that you know that radians versus degrees. We do have calculators you can borrow for in-person tests, um, but it, it is nice if you have one that you already know how to work with. So just talk to me about that if you're concerned at all. Okay, for the next one, we're actually starting at negative one zero this time. So we're already halfway around the circle just to get to the starting point. And then we're gonna go three units clockwise. Okay, so clockwise from here, we'd have to go up. And uh, did I just say three? It's six units clockwise. So we're going almost all the way around the circle. So again, your reference point is that all the way around the circle is 2 pi, which is roughly 6.28. So just having that general sense that pi is about 3.14, and you can use that to figure out approximately where you are is important here. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to be in quadrant 3 again. And then to get my exact coordinates, I'm going to have the same problem as last time. I can't just tell cosine that I've gone six units because cosine always assumes that I started at one zero. So I have to tell it that I was already halfway around the circle. So again, multiple ways to do this. You could say, okay, I'm going to think about this like I've already gone pi units around the circle. You could think of it as I've already gone negative pi units and of course, infinitely many other ways to do that. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go pi units to get here. And then after that, I have to go backwards six units. So that's not actually what the ant did, but that's what we're going to tell cosine to get us to the right place. Um, okay, let me get my purple pen back. So I'm going to say I went pi and then back six. Okay, another way to think about that is you could imagine this instead as I wrote it as subtraction, but you could say, I want to subtract pi out of that arc. So I had negative six and then I want to subtract pi off. That's also a correct, that's a negative pi minus six or a negative six minus pi. Uh, that would be another correct answer. So just be aware that there's multiple ways to get there and that's okay. And again, just use your approximate values if you're unsure. Okay, so for those approximate values, again, just make sure you have some form of technology that you're comfortable with to get these approximate values. All right, so we're going to change this. We're going to say we had pi minus 6. Pi minus 6. So I'm getting about point, not negative 0 0.96, negative 0.28. All right, and then the last one here, we're going to start, it looks like, at the bottom of the circle. So we've got to get ourselves to the bottom of the circle, and then we're going to imagine the ant is crawling five units counterclockwise. So from the bottom of the circle to go counterclockwise, we have to head to the right. Five units, let's think about that. So this is like roughly one and a half, a little more than one and a half. This is a little more than three, a little more than four and a half. So we're going just a little bit past that. And again, it's okay for this to be fairly rough, but getting it at least in the right quadrant is important. So it's looking like I am quadrant three again. We have a lot of quadrant threes in this one. So bottom of the circle, five units counterclockwise. Okay, so I think that's good. So to get our coordinates, we're going to go for a cosine and a sine again. And we have that same problem happening where we have to somehow communicate to cosine um, that we first had to make it down to zero, negative one before we went the five extra units. So 
let's see, one way to think about that would be from, from uh, 1, 0, we'd head down. So we'd go negative pi over 2 and then positive 5. Another way to do that, switched colors on you, would be to go positive 3 pi over 2 and then plus 5. So always multiple possible answers here, but hopefully you get to the point where you can kind of see the coterminal angles happening. And if not, you'll use your decimals to check yourself. All right, so, <clears throat> so negative pi over 2 plus 5. So we're going to go negative pi over 2 plus 5 and negative pi over 2 plus 5 and I get about negative 0.96 negative 0.28 so interestingly we got approximately the same coordinates it turns out we're not at exactly the same point just very 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 close uh, this surprised me actually when I got it, so I had to go investigate. So if you look at the exact decimal places for the points, they're a little bit off. So very, very close to part D, but not quite exactly. Okay, so you just want to be comfortable with starting at any of these quadrant angles and then working your way around the unit circle. And it's not that we have to do this a ton. It's just about getting really comfortable with where you are in the unit circle and exactly what sine and cosine really do. So hopefully that helped. Thanks for watching.